like to call the meeting to order for uh, Tuesday, January 14th. Start off with the Pledge of Allegiance, if you will rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you'll please remain standing for a moment uh, with a moment of silence in memory of Andy Glickson, who was a lifetime Norwalk resident and a 30-year uh, commissioner on the Norwalk Transit Authority, as well as a state representative, and he served Norwalk well. He passed away within the past two weeks. So. Thank you. <clears throat> Clerk, if you'll please read the prepared statement and call the roll. That's my chair. January 14. Please be advised this meeting is being taped for audio and video broadcast. The meeting will also be closed captioned. It's important that everyone speak clearly into the microphones and only one person speak at a time. Assisted listening devices are available. Mr. Burnett. Present. Ms. Johnson. Here. Mr. Langella. Present. Mr. Saccinelli. Ms. Smith. Here. Mr. Hooverman? Present. Mr. Uh, Mr. Roberts? Present. Mr. Dumas? Present. Ms. Young? Here. Mr. Kites? Here. Mr. Theodorides? Here. Mr. Keegan? Here. Mr. Cyrenides? Here. Mr. Livingston? Here. Ms. Shanahan? Here. 14 present, you have a quorum. I have a quorum. Uh, if you'll bear with me, before we move further, I would like to call the newest member of the Common Council forward so I can formally uh, in, uh, ish, uh, administer the oath of office for her. Mm -hmm. Why don't you come around this way? I think you might have somebody here taking pictures if I, if I read the audience correctly. Actually, I administered the oath of office earlier this afternoon in my office but we wanted to do it formally here tonight. So, um, well, you know what, why don't I come out here and... And now you'll be able to cast your first vote of abstention. I would like to uh, move forward with the minutes of the special meeting of December 10th, 2019. Do I have a motion? So moved. Moved by Ms. Shanahan. Any corrections, deletions, additions? Seeing none, all in favor of approval? Opposed? Abstentions? All right. <laughs> 13 in favor, one abstention. Next item on the agenda is public participation. Do you have one? John Flynn. Happy New Year. Uh, I want to talk about the Ordinance Committee for one minute. Uh, the Ordinance Committee changed the ethics guidelines, and I filed 13 ethics complaints over a year ago, which had 22 days to form a committee and follow the process that's in the ethics guidelines. The problem is we have 21 outstanding FOIA requests, and I believe the Ordinance Committee uh, changed the ethics guidelines. Sorry, can I move the 
Sure. Closer? Sure. Sorry, my friend. I attempted numerous times to, I call once a month the attorney handling the, the ethics guideline complaints, and he doesn't return calls, take the call, respond to any emails, and some of the topics in the ethics complaints I filed are pretty serious. We have 13 outstanding, well, we have nine outstanding police complaints, which uh, have numerous people complaining about similar topics. We just reported like uh, a, a bed bug epidemic. We couldn't get anyone in the city to focus on it. We went to multiple offices in the city. And, and it seems that we can't get any answers for anything we do. And I'm assisting two state advocates who uh, have clients that are, um, they think, being harmed. And I would agree. Uh, I just want to mention that I had a problem with the closed door settlement with Vesta Corporation by the Common Council for a million dollars. They filed an $18 million complaint. No one got to do any public commentary. And part of the problem is people were evicted for having drugs. Mr. Flynn. Uh, this is you, serious. I understand. You want to cut me off. But you are, now, you are now going off topic. Oh, as you know, the rules of well, the I'm council. Talking about the no, but you're committee. talking about other things that are outside. If you're talking about the various items I that are on the agenda for this night, this night. Uh, if you have a question, if you have a problem with not receiving telephone calls from the Corporation Council's office, I, I would ask you to send me an email and I will reach out I to have the corporate. you 50 Please let unanswered me finish. emails. I will give you. Five oh. Okay, your, your time okay. is up. Your time My is time up. is up. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, there is no uh, other person signed to address the council. Is there anybody here that wishes to address the council at this time? Ms. LaRochella, I see you moving. No? Okay. Any other person? Seeing none, we will close public participation. And now we'll go on to resignations and appointments. Under appointments, we have three tonight. The first appointment uh, is for Ms. Sharon Arbonante for the Norwalk Public Library. Do I have a motion? Yes, Mayor, I'd like to make that motion. Moved by Ms. Smith. Any comments? Any further yes, discussion? Yes, yes, please. I would like to um, highly recommend um, Sharon Bonante to the library, uh, Norwalk Public Library um, Board. I have gotten to know Sharon over the last couple of years, and I have found her uh, community engagement and social work and commitment to the city um, just incredible and inspiring. Um, she has uh, started the Love All Project. I seem to recall talking about this when you were named to the Arts Commission. Um, but the Love All Project, I think, is just such a, an incredible um, organization that you created for this city, um, just celebrating our diversity and helping us to understand our different um, backgrounds um, and, and our underrepresented, uh, underrepresented communities. And now most recently, the co-founder of Norwalk Women Who Vote, um, who's, which supports um, women to uh, get involved, to run for office, to uh, step up on boards and commissions, and uh, you're just a perfect model. Um, so I highly recommend um, Sharon for the Norwalk Public Library, and I hope she'll have your support. Any further discussion? Yes, I would also love to. Ms. Johnson. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I would also love to highly recommend Sharon Venante. I had the privilege of working with her, uh, not only in Norwalk Women Who Vote, but also in a project with Love All Project at the library. And seeing her in partnership with our great library makes this such a wonderful asset to their board. Um, and she's such a wonderful community builder, and we're lucky to have someone like her on this board. Thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Congratulations. <laughs> Next is the appointment of David Yeager to the Norwalk Transit District. Do I have a motion? <coughs> Mr. Mayor, right over here. Mr. Kites. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I believe I see Mr. Yeager in the audience. Jager. Jager, excuse me. But um, I have heard of Mr. Yeager's reputation. Not only has he been a council member, he's been very heavily involved with the community, and I do believe he will make a fine. Fine, Norwalk Transit District uh, 
member. So we're lucky to have him wherever he is. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. He's not here, but congratulations, David. Next item on the agenda is the appointment of Mr. Tad Diesel to the Zoning Board of Appeals as an alternate. Mr. Diesel is here. Do I have a motion? Yeah. Mr. Keegan. Yes, Mayor. Um, Mr. Diesel's uh, resume speaks for itself. He has a, uh, a very long history of service to our community, and we're lucky to have him. Um, I would like to recommend Mr. Tad Diesel for Zoning Board of Appeals alternate. Thank you. Further discussion? Ms. Young. I second that for Mr. Tad Diesel. Um, I had the opportunity to work with you about seven years under the prior administration, and um, you were nothing but professional and committed to uh, the city and all the work that you did and accomplished while you were in that <coughs> position as um, deputy to the mayor, I believe. Yeah, something like that, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so, you know, and in looking at your resume, too, I should have known this, but, I, but it says you established the Norwalk on the Move, and I don't know why I didn't remember that, Tad, but you, you wore many hats, and this one you're going to wear now as on the, the Zoning Board of Appeals alternate, you will wear well, and hopefully you'll be more than an alternate when, it, when that time comes. So we welcome you back to Norwalk, because you did move away, but something drew you back, and I'm kind of glad you're back. Oh. Further, oh, sorry. Okay. Further discussion. Yes, I want to echo that, uh, Tad. I know you moved away, and you kept in contact, and you something about this wonderful, wonderful community uh, drew you back, as Miss Young mentioned. And uh, I can't say that I blame you. And uh, welcome back. So, without further discussion, any uh, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Carries unanimously. We have two reappointments. One, uh, Ms. Dana Laird to the Historical Commission. Do I have a motion? Mr. Livingston. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. I'm pleased to uh, uh, nominate Ms. Laird for reappointment to the Historical Commission. Uh, she is a lifelong resident of Norwalk. She has previously served on the Historical Commission since 2001. I have worked with her there. I know she is dedicated to the city and its history. And I think she's been great on the Commission so far and will continue to do great things. Thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. Congratulations. And last but not least, the reappointment of Moina Noor to the Norwalk Public Library. Uh, do I have a motion? Mr. Mayor? The reappointment. Yes. Yes. Uh, Mr. Mr. Burnett. I'd like to move this appointment. Uh, uh, Maura's resume speaks to her ability to be an expert in communication and journalism, um, which has served her well and will continue to serve her well uh, on the um, Norwalk Public Library Board. Um, that kind of experience and knowledge will help us continue to communicate to the community all the great things that we're doing with the public library. Thank you, Mr. Burnett. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries unanimously. I don't see Moina here. If those of you who have been appointed or reappointed, if you'll come down, we'll administer the oath of office right here on the spot. Sharon first, if you raise your right hand, or we'll wait for the photos. You want to come over to this side, it'll be easier. There you go. You? And you? You don't, you don't want to do that. All right. Having been appointed a member of the Public Library Board of the City of Norwalk, do solemnly swear or affirm that you will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of said office according to your best skill and judgment, so help you God, or upon the pains of penalties of perjury. Congratulations. Yeah. Sign this, sign two of them, and then we'll give you one to keep. Mr. Diesel, if you'll step forward. You'll raise your right hand. Well, you stand at attention very nicely. That's the military stance. You? 
Decent. Having been appointed an alternate member of the Zoning Board of Appeals of the City of Norwalk, do solemnly swear or affirm that you will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of said office according to your best skill and judgment, so help you God or upon the pains and penalties of perjury. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> That's right. You know how often that happens? Yeah. The first time. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll take care of it. We'll fix That's okay. That comes out of your first paycheck, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You got a two for there. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. And the next item on the agenda, Mayor's, Mayor's remarks. Um, don't forget Monday, January 20th, uh, number one, City Hall will be closed January 20th. is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Uh, this Sunday, the 19th, the day before that day, is Justice Sunday at 11 a.m. The ceremonies will be at Canaan Institutional Baptist Church in Norwalk. On Monday, the 20th, there's an 8 a.m. annual Martin Luther King Community Breakfast at Calvary Baptist Church, followed immediately by a 10 a.m. MLK Day of Service. In the evening is the citywide program at 7 p.m. in the Norwalk City Concert Hall. Uh, the council people are all invited to attend. Um, the public is invited to attend. It's always a great service, especially the one at night here at City Hall. If you haven't been, uh, please uh, try to get here. Uh, we always encourage people to attend, but also to bring their children uh, to learn a little bit about our history and about Martin Luther King and the things that uh, he did uh, for, this, for this country. Number two, firefighter applications. Uh, we're still being accepted for those interested in becoming a firefighter, and we're asking people to reach out to their friends and neighbors and ask if anybody's interested in serving on the Norwalk Fire Department, most importantly. But this year, we're trying something new. Uh, we're joining a consortium of uh, a, a group that is going to provide the written test, and they provided the test for us the last time, but they're also, um, whoever takes this test would be eligible to serve on one of 15 fire departments that are members of the consortium. Uh, it's uh, going to be given, uh, let's see, the 15 departments include Norwalk, New Canaan, Fairfield, and Wilton, among others. Uh, usually people have to pay multiple fees, so this is a great opportunity for residents. Uh, you can go online or contact the Norwalk Fire Department for uh, information. Uh, going online, you can go online and search out IO, ISO, I'm sorry, IS, IS, Aleutians, I guess. It's ISO Aleutians, it's supposed yeah, to be. ISO. ISO Solutions is really with the group, but it's ISO L-U-T-I-O-N-S. So go online, Google that, and you can get their website, and you'll be able to uh, apply online. Uh, last but not least, tickets are selling out for the 2020 Mayor's Ball. Uh, this year we have some really amazing sponsors, and the auction items, they're better than ever. Uh, if you don't know the two recipients this year, one is going to be the Star Foundation uh, up on Wolf Pit Avenue and the uh, Norwalk YMCA. So uh, please join us. Um, call the office here at 854-7704. Or again, uh, you can, well, they'll give you information. You can uh, register online as well. Any council people have any comments they'd like to make? Okay, seeing none, Ms. Smith. Thank you, Mayor. Um, two things uh, quickly before we move on to the consent calendar. Um, Darlene Young will be taking the open seat on the Maritime Aquarium Authority, left open by Colin Houston, going over to the Board of Ed. And um, would just also like to welcome uh, Dominique Johnson. We are all pleased uh, to have you with us. Um, Dominique is, um, I've gotten to know Dominique uh, just a little bit over the, the past year, and she's been really very involved in District D, in the DTC. Um, she's a member of the Triangle Community Center, uh, co-founder of Norwalk Women Who Vote. She's been really, really involved um, in her community, and she really cares. And so I think uh, you will be a great addition, um, and welcome. And the consent calendar tonight will be read by David Hoofelman. Section A, Ordinance Committee. 
Approved revisions to the following sections of Chapter 68, Noise. Sound level limits, Section 68.5A1, Table 2. Sound level limits, Section 68.5C13. And, and prohibited activities, Section 68.6B6. Recreation, Parks, and Cultural Affairs Committee, 1A. Authorize the Mayor, Harry Rilling, to enter into an agreement with Norwalk Hospital Foundation for the use of Cat Pasture Beach for their annual Whittingham Cancer Center walk run to be held Saturday, May 16th, 2020 from 7.30 a.m. to 12 noon. Set up to begin at 5 a.m. with teardown no later than 2 p.m. on Saturday, May 16th, 2020. Estimated attendance, 2,000. B1B. <clears throat> Approve the use of the showmobile by the Norwalk Hospital Foundation for their annual Whittingham Cancer Center walk run to be held Saturday, May 16th, 2020 from 7.30 a.m. to 12 noon. B2A. Authorize the Mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to enter into an agreement with Alzheimer's Association Connecticut Chapter for the use of Calf Pasture Beach for their annual Walk to End Alzheimer's to be held Sunday, October 11th, 2020, from 8.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Set up to begin at 6 a.m. with teardown no later than 2 p.m. on Sunday, October 11th, 2020. Tents to be set up Friday, October 9th. Estimated attendance, 1,500. B2B. Approve the use of the showmobile by the Alzheimer's Association Connecticut Chapter for their annual Walk to End Alzheimer's to be held Saturday, October 11th, 2020 from 8.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. B3. Authorize the Mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to enter into an agreement with Norwalk Lacrosse Association Incorporated for their use of Veterans Park for the Pound the Sound Youth Lacrosse event to be held Saturday, June 6, 2020 from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Sunday, June 7, 2020 from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Set up to begin at 6 a.m. on Friday, June 5, 2020 with teardown no later than 7 p.m. on Sunday, June 7, 2020. Estimated attendance, 1,000 over two days. B4. Authorize the Mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to enter into an agreement with MBI Inc. Norwalk High School Marching Band for the, their use of Norwalk High School parking lots for their annual winter percussion event to be held Saturday, March 21st, 2020 from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Estimated attendance, 2,500 staggered. B5A. Authorize the Mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to enter into a contract with Major Construction Incorporated for the Veterans Park Marina Finger Floats replacement for a sum not to exceed $58,865, account noted. B5B. Authorize the Director, Recreation and Parks, to issue change order to Major Construction Incorporated for the Veterans Park Marina Finger Floats replacement for a sum not to exceed $5,886. Account noted. B6. Authorize the Mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to enter into an agreement with Rowayton School PTA for their use of Rowayton Elementary School Field for the Rowayton Carnival to be held Friday, May 8, 2020, from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m., and Saturday, May 9, 2020, from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Set up to begin at 7 a.m. on Wednesday, May 6, 2020, with teardown no later than 9 a.m. on Sunday, May 10, 2020, weather permitting. Estimated attendance, 500 daily. B7. Authorize the Mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to enter into an agreement with Gordon Fine Arts, LLC, for their use of Matthews Park for their annual Norwalk Arts Festival to be held Saturday, June 27, 2020, and Sunday, June 28, 2020, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. each day. Set up to begin at 10 a.m. on Friday, June 26, 2020, with teardown no later than 7 p.m. Sunday, June 28, 2020. Estimated attendance, 400. B8. Authorize the Mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to enter into an agreement with Gordon Fine Arts, LLC, for the use of 50 Washington Street Plaza for their annual Soho Arts Festival to be held on Saturday, August 1, 2020, from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., and Sunday, August 2, 2020, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Set up to begin at 7 a.m. on Saturday, August 1, 2020, with teardown no later than 7 p.m. Sunday, August 2, 2020. Estimated attendance, 1,200. C. Public Works Committee. C1. Authorize the Mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to execute an amendment to the original agreement with H.W. Lochner and Design and Coordination Services dated September 29, 2016, in connection with Walk Bridge Program, State Projects Numbers Noted, for a total sum not to exceed $201,318.77. 
account number 100% state reimbursable account noted. C2, approve the fourth taxing district pro property extensions through September 30th, 2019, as per the list dated December 27th, 2019. Section D, Land Use and Building Committee, D1. Authorize the Mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to execute an amendment to the license agreement with Norwalk Seaport Association Incorporated for access to the Hope Dock from North Water Street parking lot to extend the agreement period from February 1st, 2020 to January 31st, 2021. D2A. Authorize the purchasing agent to issue a purchase order to W.C. McBride Electrical Contractor, LLC, for the Norwalk Concert Hall Sound System Replacement Project for a total not to exceed $39,140. Account noted. D. 2B, authorize the Office of Building Management to issue change orders on contract for a total not to exceed $3,914. D3A, authorize the Mayor Harry W. Rilling to execute an agreement with Universal Business Services, LLC, for City Hall Air Handler Unit Refurbishment Project for a total not to exceed $64,839.96. Funds are available from account noted. Accounts noted. D. D3B, authorize the Office of Building Management to issue change orders for the contract for a total not to exceed $6,483. D4, authorize the Mayor Harry W. Rilling to execute an amendment to the agreement with Norwalk <coughs> Grassroots Tennis and Education Incorporated for the use of the modular building at Nathaniel Eli Center to accept the two-year renewal option for $1 per year. The city will continue to have no responsibility for utility expenses, building repairs, and or capital replacement. Section E, Finance Committee. E1, accept and approve the report of the Claims Committee dated December 12, 2019 and January 9, 2020. E2, for informational purposes only, narrative on tax collections dated December 12, 2019 and January 9, 2020. E3, for informational purposes only, monthly tax collectors report dated November 2019 and December 2019. Thank you, Mr. Hoopelman. Um, unless there are any objections, I'll call for a vote. All in favor of the consent calendar as read. Opposed? Abstentions? Carries unanimous. Yep. Okay, item. <laughs> 782, Ms. Uh, Mr. Livingston. Yes, I, I'm feeling Mr. Hostin was chair. Actually, he wasn't chair. I filled in for him at that point. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> move the item, uh, move the item and speak to it. It's a uh, move the item of uh, two, approve revision to chapter 103, taxation, article two, tax exemption for solar energy systems, replace the current sections 103-3 and 103-4 with the following section. Uh, section 103-3, use of solar energy system. Uh, this this, uh, this uh, new s uh, s section replaces our existing, se well, the old section, which was uh, somewhat outdated and applied to certain buildings and, quite, quite frankly, was quite antiquated and hard to understand or even use these days. So we replaced it in a manner that's consistent with the current state law which provides that residents of Norwalk will be able to seek a tax exemption for the difference by which the, uh, a solar system, a house with a solar system or property with a solar system exceeds the value of that property without a, with a system. I'm sorry, without. It's the cold, head cold, sorry. Um, so in essence, you get the difference in value brought about by having that solar system. Uh, and they're entitled to that exemption as long as, for as long as the solar energy system is equipped and operating. Uh, an application for the exemption must be filed within 30 days following the annual assessment date. Uh, this is an, another example of uh, the city promoting green energy and uh, solar energy, and I think it's a great thing, and we ought to approve it. Thank you. Further discussion? Mr. Mr. Kites. Um, over the last handful of years, both the state and the, and the federal level, there has been a reduction in the and uh, the rebates and the tax benefits available to um, property owners as far as solar is concerned. And uh, unfortunately, um, that's led to a reduction in the amount of solar panels and solar systems that have been sold in the area. So I'm, I'm really happy to see. I want to thank the Warden's Committee and, and uh, for, you know, finding this, looking at this, and, 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 and modifying this because I think um, 
you know, we got to lead by example. And, it's, it's, and uh, whatever we can do to promote green energy is, is a good thing, not just for Norwalk, but for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? Extensions? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Miss Young, items 7B, 10, 9 and 10. 9 and 10. Authorize the mayor. Can you read this again? You don't have to read it again, right? Um, yes, you do, because it wasn't read. Right. Yep. <laughs> Authorize the mayor, Harry W. Reilly, to enter into an agreement with Last Parking LTD LLC for management of the seasonal paid parking collection and enforcement of Calf Pasture Beach, Shady Beach, Taylor Farm, Veterans Park, and Cranberry Park for 2020 to 2023, <coughs> an amount not to exceed $187,200 the first year, $194,688 the second year, $202,475 the third year, and $210,574 the final year as a sole source provider for this project. Ms. Young has moved the item. Uh, would you like to discuss it? Um, yes, and I think... I know Nick Roberts was here. He just walked out. He's out the door. Should we go? Uh, yeah, we should get him. Yeah. I'll get him. You get him? Yeah. Up to oh, uh, we have a uh, library attendant going to take him. Nick. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Uh, we're on the uh, item with the yeah, parking, so if you'll come down to the podium. Thank you, Mr. Roberts and Miss Young. Yes. So we read the item, and it was taken off consent because I think... Um, um, Councilman um, Keegan had some questions. Mr. Keegan. Yeah, I, I just have a, a couple of questions about um, not the contract itself, but uh, in committee we were, t we were told of a revenue um, disparity between 2018 and last year that the city collected parking receipts and 2019 when Laz um, collected the receipts. It was considerable. My question, I didn't ask it at the committee meeting, was um, did we use uh, the, also the tickets uh, and the projected revenue from the tickets that were uh, actually voided as part of our revenue no. uh, acceptance? No, no um, we did not. That was just everything that was collected through the app. Okay. The app. Um, as far as revenues collected from citations, whether they were voided or whether they went to collections and we were able to recoup a certain percentage, that revenue was not reflected in the number that was provided to you. Okay. Um, at the meeting. And then I have one other question. A lot of the complaints that I'm hearing from uh, members of the community have to do with their encounters with the parking attendants has to do with, in my opinion, customer service. And I'm wondering, is there any way that we can um, add the language to the contract uh, that would require LAS Parking to provide customer service training to all of their parking uh, enforcement employees um, such that uh, we would uh, find it acceptable, the training that they get? Could we do that? Uh, I'm not sure. I'll have to ask the legal on that question. But um, what I would like to do moving forward is, so we're revamping the Parks and Rec webpage. And as part of that, we want to do community surveying. So whether it's programs, facilities, or services, and in this case, parking could be one of those items that we can also serve it, we can also survey periodically. And I think the parking authority also has um, a part on their webpage where they do take comments and they do survey from time to time. But I can also speak to them and ask them to make sure that their staffs, you know, adequately trained in customer service policies and such. Very good, I, uh, Mr. Hooverman. Uh, just a, a question about how how moving forward with a four-year contract or extending this through into a five-year contract, uh, the how what metric we have to look at the performance of LAS over the course of every year and reevaluate that performance within the within the terms of this contract. Is there anything within the contract that allows for that? Uh, there are no performance measures currently in the contract. But the reason why I, I did a four-year contract is because I wanted to make sure that it aligned with the parking authority contract with LAS as well. Right now, there is a cost savings because everything's already integrated, it's already set up, the appeals process is already in place. 
So I wanted to keep them on the same timeline, and then when it goes out to bid again, then we can either go a separate way or choose another vendor at that point. But as far as performance uh, indicators in the contract, there isn't, there wasn't anything in last year's contract, um, and I don't know what exactly we'd be able to build into that moving forward. I mean, was there we have, any? We have the revenues, and then we can also do the survey as far as the customer service portion of it. But I don't know how we'd be able to construct that in a in a contract. Was there any discussion about just doing this on a year to year basis and not linking up as we work the the kinks out of the system, so to speak? Yes, there was there was talks of trying to maybe do a one year and then add extensions to that as we move forward. But again, I think the savings is trying to align it with the parking authorities contract with labs because again their systems are already in place they do the appeals they do the citations and the collections and everything already in place so there's a cost savings of aligning it at the same time with the parking authority's contract with labs yeah thank you yes smith yeah i'm just wondering um if you could address perhaps you know because we know that there have been a lot of complaints mm -hmm. from the public particularly at calf pasture can you address some of the public's complaints and um, some of the kinks that you worked out um, um, over the course of the season? Well, I think the first thing is a lot of people s said they didn't see Laz coming or going around in the parking lots. Laz uses one of our parks vehicles. It has our parks logo, so it's not a Laz vehicle like you would see typically elsewhere out there. Um, we also had comments that uh, they weren't there often, but that vehicle has a GPS. We're able to tell where it goes in the entire day, how, many how much time they spend in a certain spot. We're also able to alter their routes. So on the weekends, a holiday weekend, when we know we have more traffic at the beach as opposed to Cranberry, we're able to tell them, look, you need to spend more time at this location. We're able to see that in real time tracking the GPS. Um, the other complaint that we got or the comments we got was sometimes the cell signal were, were not strong at Cranberry um, or even down at CAF when we had busy weekends and there's a lot of people on their phones in the same location. So as part of that, we were looking to um, implement pay stations this year. That was the other item that's on the agenda to try to address some of those issues. So we're looking to put two in at CAF and two in at Cranberry to try to address those issues. Um, and the other thing that we got was just, I think in the first year of rolling out the program, a lot of people weren't familiar that, hey, um, you can go online and you can check. You don't have to go in and get a paper pass anymore. So we're going to actually try to message uh, early in the season as opposed to waiting as we get, you know, it's a May when it's kind of late for that. Because we got a, we got a cram at the, at the last weekend when everybody realized that we were going back to the pay system. Thank you. For the, Mr. Burnett. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, could, could you just share with us the process that it, if someone does have a concern about uh, parking, um, um, uh, what is the process that they go through in terms of logging that concern, and how do we get back to them with the resolution on that particular issue? Uh, from, the, from the resident's perspective, everyone last year that got a citation, they were able to call the park office, give us the copy of the ticket or the citation number, and then we followed up and last to void the ticket. So every resident last year that received the ticket, we essentially waived because, again, we, we were trying to work out. Um, some people got their passes and had a change in registration, wasn't on the grand list, so it wasn't automatically in the system, so they had to come in. Um, but in any of those cases, they were able to call the park office, come in, provide the citation. We followed up with LAS, and we voided the ticket for them. And again, if it's a non-resident and they had an issue with the ticket, they wanted to appeal it, then they would go through the same process they would as re uh, anywhere else in the city. Go down to Laz's office, file, file the appeal, and then go through that process. So, so, just a follow so that was a first-year initiative. So in year two, if someone has a concern, then the ticket's not going to get voided right away. Correct. They can still call us. Right. We, we'll do the. It takes literally 48 hours to wipe the, the citation out of the system. Um, and this year, yes, we're, we're, we're probably going to also you know, avoid some of those tickets until people get stuff in order. But last year we saw cases where one person in particular may have gotten six tickets for the same exact thing and they continued with the same behavior. Some of those we may not be able to do again. Thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none, um, all in favor of, yeah, Mrs. Young, do you did move it? You move this forward, yes. okay. Uh, seeing none, all in favor of the motion? Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. And now, Ms. Young, uh, whoops, you want to stand by here, Mr. Roberts, yes. just in case. Uh, item 7B10. Sure. 
Authorize the Mayor Harry W. Reeling to enter an agreement with Flowbird for the purchase of four CWTCC pay stations for an amount not to exceed $30,740. Account number noted. So. Ms. Young moved that. Any uh, discussion? I think Nick kind of moved right. that already. But They're kind of tied, tied uh, in, together. Tied in together. Correct. Those are just the pay stations that will take credit card transactions and will not collect cash. So it provides another option for folks who may not have a smartphone or may not want to put their credit card information into an app. They're able to use a credit card right there on the site to be able to do it. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Next item is um, Land Use 7D5, <coughs> Mr. Livingston. Excuse me. Uh, yes, Ms. Uh, Smith. Smith. Please note that Ms. Smith is recusing herself on this item, and Ms. Smith has left the building. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll move. You, I think if you go in there, you get electrocuted on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll move the item and speak to it. Uh, Mr. Livingston. Uh, D5, authorize the purchasing agent to issue a purchase order to JCJ Architecture PC to provide limited conceptual architectural design services for the new Norwalk High School construction project. This design effort, together with construction cost estimating services to be provided by a separate firm, will be the basis for the new Norwalk High School budget. Fees for the design services shall be for a total not to see $50,000. Funds are available in the existing Norwalk High School capital budget account, as noted. Uh, this this is uh, part of the new Moak High School building project, which I think we're all familiar with. Um, what this does is it enables us to get a good estimate for the cost of a new building. Right now, we're sort of basing, basing our estimates on uh, general costs based upon student and potential student enrollment, state um, state allocated. Um, space allowed per, per student and uh, multiplier. What this does is get an architecture firm in there to do a conceptual rendering of the building and then also get a cost estimator. What it doesn't do, which is important, is it does not obligate us to use this uh, architecture firm for any other projects. We're not obligated them in any way. And I guess also important, it doesn't obligate us to build a high school. What it does is just get us the best number we can get so we can go forward in an intelligent manner. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Oh, I'm sorry. Alan's here if anybody has any questions. Yeah, Alan is here if you have questions. <laughs> Alan has no questions. <laughs> you, have a, you have a question? Alan has questions. <laughs> you came here. You've got to get you to come up. You're here, right? Alan wants to go home. I know. So the question, um, um, Councilman Livingston said this would help us secure um, a number. So, in your estimation, how long would the, the that estimate be? Um, About Eighty-five pages. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, what hap what happens is that we are <clears throat> we need to request the money as part of the next year capital budget. So the council is going to be looking at a capital budget request uh, from 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 the staff from the city. <clears throat> in order to get that number ready for you. My goal is to, um, this is a very tight time frame. We, our goal is to get something to the mayor, to the common council by March 1st. So we have about six weeks to do this. So the numbers we've been playing around with, just like, you know, me and Jim, you know, Jim, mm -hmm. Jim from the office, it's just, you know, we're looking at these numbers and then do multipliers. And it's like, you know, new construction, $550 a square, square feet and things like that. So this will give us opportunity because if you know, well, you, you, everybody probably knows the site. So it's the configuration of the building is kind of unique, it's just at an angle. So we are trying to do phasing, which is a method of building some, a new portion of the building, move, move kids into that portion, demolish a portion, and build another portion kind of thing. So it's kind of very complicated. So to the extent we can to get the best number available, it's important to the city because once we got that number approved by the council, eventually get approved by the state by June 30th, we lock into that number. So anything above that becomes a city responsibility. So to the extent that we get the best number we can get at this point, it's important. So this money is well spent. And also, as uh, Councilor Livin said, is that um, the optics that we hire for this phase is $50,000. And um, so we intend to go out to RFP for architect for this project probably by 
March to go through the whole interview process to select the optics. The fees would be somewhere probably around $6 million or so for, for the architecture service, so it's substantial. So this is just one step. Again, we're not required to use these guys, this architecture firm. We just, all they're doing is the evaluation for us. So the project really hasn't start, started yet. It's really, this is just so that the city and the council have as good as number we can get at this point. Excuse me, Alan, I think one thing Ms. Young was um, asking about before was, does this include an inflationary factor in it? So that if we don't, you know, in terms of when we start construction, is it that will. It, we will. We will project out how long it took to take us to do the design phase and how long the project. The project probably takes two and a half years to build. We just guessed at this point. So because we did uh, Friday Man High School, that took us 30 months or so, so it took two and a half years. Uh, but I'm assuming that this is required to take about the same amount of time. So what typically we do the estimate based on, first we do the projection escalating cost per year, and then we take the construction, it's two and a half years, we take the midpoint and calculate that as the inflation rates. For, for, so we probably do like, let's say roughly a, month, a year and a half of escalation plus the design year, which is another year. So we we'll escalate it for two and a half years or so. I just have one question, uh, Alan. It's, it says on the third line, with construction cost estimating services to be provided by a separate firm, but that fee for that is all included in the fee for... No. So it's additional money. Right. Um, we typically do not want the... Do not, we usually go out private to, to a cost estimate firm to do estimating. Uh, the ability of the architecture firm to do estimating, it's uh, a lot of times questionable. So we always go to the construction people that do estimating for us. So that's what we're going to do this separately. We figure it's probably another ten, <coughs> excuse me, about ten thousand dollars for cost estimating. Okay, so the total is sixty. About sixty, not fifty. Right. Okay. Further discussion. Seeing none. All in favor? Opposed? Extensions, motion carries unanimously. Thank you. We need another motion. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Okay, all in favor? All right. Thank you.